Hello, friends. Hey, mamas. Welcome to My Invisible Disease Podcast. We are here to share our struggles and hacks as two moms living with chronic illness. Tune in and join our community as we share stories and experiences while we sort through the ups and downs of living with invisible disease. Hey, Cassie. Hey, girl. (laughs) How are you? Good. So today I think we had kind of talked about that we really want to discuss a bit of the physical. So we've been talking to a lot of other women suffering with invisible disease, different conditions, maybe autoimmune conditions, other forms of chronic illness. And one thing that we see like reoccurring in conversations is, is this physical and how it, even though it's, it, how do I say, like invisible, you don't see it. There's still a lot of complications to physically how people can, the limitations involved. I mean, Holly is a perfect example, but we have like Sue with chronic fatigue. And yeah, what do you think about that? <laughs> um, sorry, in my mind right now, all I'm thinking is Olivia Newton-John's song. Let's get physical, physical. <laughs> That would be a good segue into this it, yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, we should play that song. No, I'll just sing it for everybody. I'm just <laughs> kidding. No, but you're right, though. Um, when it comes to overcoming a lot of the different ailments that, like, I know for myself, I have rigorous physical activity that I have to do. And by rigorous, I mean, like, small things like flexing my neck and, you know, keeping the range of motion in my shoulders and things that are actually ridiculous that I have to practice to do up and down on my tippy toes, like 15 times, but three times. So it actually gets quite challenging. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm confident it's going to give me that juicy booty though. Cause I can feel it in my butt. Oh, and, and it is, I think there's somewhat when people identify possibly from the outside chronic illness, they don't necessarily see what people do to manage or like help their own recovery or healing process. And they don't necessarily think of it as like a physical process that it is all about rest, which I'm a huge supporter of like rest, relaxation, restoration to our body. But yeah, this, the physical regime, I, and I think too, why this has been important to me is I've been trying to get to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mornings. I didn't go this morning because we had family crisis yesterday and have, I was up late. <laughs> but, you know, it's so important for my disease to stay physically active. And that might be different compared to someone that goes for 10k runs. But, you know, it may look different. My activity level may still be a lot lighter <laughs> than what other people yeah. are used to. But it is, it plays such a big role, especially, you know, with some of the uh, different women that we've talked to. Yeah. I brought home my um, sheets from the occupational therapist and Jess is like, oh, what? let me see. Like, what kind of stuff do they have you doing? And it's literally like the smallest of movements, but it's like, you have to remember, I had a ton of necrosis, like dead muscle tissue. I am starting out at literally nothing. Like my small children think it's funny that they're stronger than me. And Brixton thinks it's hilarious that he can lift heavier stuff than me, but I am now beating him in arm wrestles. So who's working out now, buddy? (laughs) Well, I am struggling with the idea that I'm going to the gym, but I'm not seeing any like gains. (laughs) Mm. I'm not seeing my body change in any significant way or any like, major weight loss from building so much muscle. But for me, in a weird way, it's almost about like lubricating my organs. (laughs) Interesting. Um, And just staying mobile. Uh, It's I think that's that lifestyle of just sitting can really have an even more negative effect on people living with chronic illness. And then the other side to it, though, is with lower energy levels, it tends to be a go to like that, that rest restore, but like, is it active rest? Is this, you know, so many of us struggle with the idea of feeling or being like labeled as lazy, but on the flip side of that, how, you know, how is that contributing to the actual physical ailments that we're dealing with? Well, and 
it's all connected. Like if you are sitting around and you're not moving your body and you're not, you know, kind of pushing yourself to the limits, I think it really clouds the brain. Like your mental space, it almost becomes limiting because you just kind of succumb like, oh no, I don't really feel like going for a walk. But then if you actually like get off your ass and go for the walk, how much better do you feel after? Like how much... Yeah. Yeah. I just enjoyed leaving the house and seeing people, even though I don't know them, but like seeing other people at the gym and it, it just being that experience that brings me into a different external environment. (laughs) I know you've been going for a few weeks now. So do you have like, like the, the wave people, like you've seen them there enough that you're like, Oh, I know that girl from the gym. Do you wave Um, at them? I do. So I have, there's, I I do have a few friends that go at the same time and it's more of an accountability piece. We don't do a lot of chatting just because I mean, for myself, that's like my time, my space. So I have those girls that I see there and it's, you know, small chat and they're good friends of mine. But then funny enough, there's also a few women that I know from like a decade ago that I played roller derby with. And they're actually, you know, probably 10 years older than myself. So they're there just going as partners with each other, um, you know, support system. And it's been fun just to recognize them, see them. But as I was telling you today, going so early in the morning, I kind of do that to avoid the crowds. I do that because that's the best time of day for me. But there's also another piece of it that the people showing up that early are there to like work out. Like no one's, I'm not at a like, Miami Beach, Florida gym where it's like crop tops and booty shorts. It, this is seniors and middle agers that are just trying to get some exercise in. My people. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Which I feel really positive about. However, I did have a woman this week ask me on Monday when I was due if I was pregnant and it what? spoiled my entire day. <laughs> okay, what do you mean? Well, it's just, okay, I understand that my abdomen is more distended and that's because of my disease. Trust me, I have crazy body issues over it that I try to work through, but I show up to the gym as myself because that is what I consider a safe space. And especially at six in the morning, I'm not looking to be judged physically by anyone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) However, it happens. And, you know, wondering if anyone else have ever experienced something similar. I know a lot of moms get get this because you know bodies change but man oh man like you just don't ask women that guys okay don't <laughs> so she just walked up to you and just like asked but like enough that I had headphones in and she was trying to establish the conversation enough that I actually had to like pull my headphones out and be like excuse me like what and she's like oh when are you due and showed me like with her hands physically like oh like showing me a belly bump and I'm like I'm not And I'm like, actually, I have liver disease. And then her next response was, oh, and it makes your abdomen stick out like that. (gasps) Oh, just like, okay, so fuck you. (laughs) This is not like, I do not think you should be, anyone should be physically judged. And I, and I get like some people think that it's like for them, it's like, ooh, I know a secret about your body, your body, and I'm gonna come up to you and I'm, like indulge in it. And it's like, you know, <laughs> I don't even, I don't even know the response. It's just it's keep it to yourself. On, yeah, it's still a judgment on someone's body. And at the same time, I feel like anyone that might be carrying like an extra twenty pounds more than myself m- may have like a larger abdomen than me, and like. You know, it's it's like- so okay. If because you are pretty petite, like overall, do you think if you were like a little bit like chubbier, she would have come up to you? No, no, no. And so it's, I mean, like it's so it's frustrating because it's like people assume because I'm not carrying as much extra weight that like oh it must be a pregnant belly, and it's like yeah. I also have diastasis recti, which is ab separation. And that was not from my disease. That was from pregnancy, which for so many women that leads to like a a distended abdomen because their, um, their stomach girdle is like stretched and damaged. And I was never able to recover mine also because I have so much pressure behind it from my organs that are oversized. And, but like, so, but 
even so, before my organs were so oversized, like people probably could have asked the same thing because of my like in, it's considered an injury, diastasis recti, um, from pregnancy. And it's just kind of like, I don't know. I don't like well, feeling judged. <laughs> Sally might be a bitch, but I am so proud of you for doing the work. I don't get up at 6.30 in the morning and go to the gym. Like, I actually, like, physically couldn't. My children are still in bed and there's nobody here for them. But it's also a great excuse because I wouldn't do the work anyways. I wouldn't go. Well, and funny enough, I think the actual work that I did that day was more so on my mental load of Mm -hmm. because it made me face like these are consequences physically of my disease. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, that my body image is not what I wish it was. And that is something I need to process. So it's like that was the actual work that I did that. Yeah. No, not even the workout. Like, of course, the workout. But I like say a light activity. It's really enjoyable. I'm a morning person now. It's like, I think just after having kids, I I had to shift. But um, yeah, like that mental load for me of like processing some of those grievances that you, and and this goes for a lot of people into physical grievances. Like you can't do things anymore. And like, my body's not what it used to be. Or, you know, yeah, I was like mourning my physical body in a way. (laughs) If that makes sense. Oh, well, I get that. Like, when I was going through everything, like September, I lost 20 pounds in September and like I was concaved. I looked ridiculous. And I remember in that moment being so insecure. I like, I was like, oh my God, my teeth look big because my cheeks are so like hollowed in. Like this is so weird. And, but I will report back that my body had absolutely no problem gaining all the weight back. She came back strong and confident and now, (laughs) yeah, now it's like, okay, maybe can we find a happy medium? (laughs) Yeah. Well, and, and that's, and it too, like, I remember when you were like the physical limitations that you had when you lost a lot of your mobility being like, I can't fucking go to the bathroom without worrying. And it was like, you know, and I think so many people with maybe degenerative disease, like physically or stuff like that, there is a point where you hit that grief that you experience of having to accept something that wasn't the way you imagined. <laughs> so. Well, no, but I, I do kind of channel a lot of that in like when I do my squats, if you will, like they're modified, but you know, when I'm getting low and getting back up, I'm like, yeah, look at me go. Like I literally could not do this. Mm-hmm. Or when I'm lifting weights, I literally could not do this. Like, I borrow Brixton's five pounders and I get up there and I do the work and I try and build some more muscle. But in the back of my mind, I can't help but think like, Jesus Christ, I could not do this before. And now I'm getting strong again. Like I'm proud of myself because I am getting stronger. And uh, eventually, who am I kidding? I'm not winning any like weightlifting competitions. (laughs) Well, that's it. We're training to to maintain not to like <laughs> dominate <laughs> because, because that's it like in the same way the type of physical activity i'm doing right now is to get out of the house to keep my body moving for health reasons but you know i'm not seeing I, i'm not turning into a bodybuilder by any means like i'm not lifting the weights to make that big of like physical change yeah yeah but it's good for the Good for the mindset. Get out there, do it for yourself. Your body will thank you. Yeah. Um, so when we do our interviews with all of our awesome guests, we always do our Mary Fuck Kill. Mm-hmm. It's your turn. Yeah. Okay. So So Mary, what are you marrying? What's your tried and true, Jenny? Um, mine, I would say, and I've said this before, is still my instant pot. I am one that Cooking, so the combination of low energy and ADHD, <laughs> mm. um, meal planning is tough for me. And in addition to that, like, so I'll hyper focus on this idea of meal planning because it's organized and it seems like really great, but actually, like, implementing can sometimes be difficult. So, one pot type meals tends to be the way to get things done for me. As soon as I have to like incorporate multitasking, <laughs> it definitely uh, 
messes things up. So the instant pot for me, because I can toss everything in and mornings are where I do my best. So I can either toss stuff in in the morning and do like a slow cooker piece to it where, you know, I can put it on for like four to six hours or I can put it in a bag. So like a Ziploc bag. And if it's something that I'm going to use the pressure cooker for so that I can dump everything in in the morning when I'm feeling my energy. And then when by dinner time, when it's the witching hour for my kids and I'm exhausted and done for the day, I just dump that in the instant pot and I pressure cook it. Two other things I love it for, we have farm chickens. So my kids love hard boiled eggs. If anyone else has chickens, you understand that when you have really fresh eggs, boiling them, you you can't de-shell them. Like the membrane, it sticks. Anyway, they turn into really? a mess. Oh, yeah. Old have eggs. you tried baking soda in your water? Yes, but for like day day old fresh eggs, it doesn't, it's still not good. The only oh. way to get the shells off in like almost one piece, like beautifully with no damage to the egg is an instant pot. And I put huh. them in there. I put like a cup of water, uh, the, the tray. I put probably like six eggs. I usually do at a time and uh, six minutes and they're perfect. And they one crack and it just peels off. So I know I'm getting like way off on this, but <laughs> these are the things I use it for. And then bone broth, which is, as I've talked about before, one of my ways of maintaining my gut health. I do it once at the beginning of the week, stick it in there for two hours, which is the same as pretty much running it for 24 hours in a slow cooker. I used to, this slow cooker used to be my go-to until I found the Instant Pot. And that supplies me, you know, those gut healthy snacks throughout the day. Like I just sip on bone broth. And so what do you like better, really poultry like or beef bone broth? Honestly, it just depends on what we have in the house. <laughs> yeah. So like I'll buy beef bones, but if like, let's say, I mean, we're, but we're, we're kind of back and forth vegetarians. We were vegan mm -hmm. for a while. We don't eat a ton of meat, but if I do do like a rotisserie chicken or something like grab and go, because grab and go is the way to go. If you don't have a lot of energy, I'll do, I'll use like the carcass and do a bone broth from the chicken. And it always turns out really great, but typically because we don't have a ton of like meat always in the house, I'll just buy bones and freeze them. And then I can just toss those in. So I'll brown them for a minute. And then I just throw in all my kitchen scraps. that hasn't made it to the chickens <laughs> and then celery, like super simple, but like delicious. And my Himalayan salt to help like remineralize my body as well. Right. So that's my Mary. And for anyone that had this low energy, like those are like valid points. <laughs> <laughs> like to having to take 10 minutes to peel an egg is the most annoying thing in the world. I um, love egg salad, but I don't oh. eat it because I just hate peeling eggs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, who's so good at peeling eggs, our friend Heather. Oh. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were at the cabin and I was like, let's make egg salad sandwiches. So we made egg salad for like the 12 of us. Oh. And she was just like, so good at Freshening. peeling eggs. She's like, yeah, I did this at a golf course when I was like 18. Oh. So she's got it down to an art. Yeah. So if you ever need your eggs peeled, call Heather because she's got that shit on lockdown. Yeah. I would have never guessed. <laughs> I know. Hidden talents. Hidden talents. Um, okay. So then my, oh, my indulgence. Yeah. What are you so, cheating with? So this comes back to the idea that last year when I got on the liver transplant list, I thought, you know what? screw it. I'm going to indulge. I'm going and I'm going to go get Botox. So I went once I got Botox on my 11 lines and yeah, just loves my, it. this little, and I didn't get a lot because it was my first time and the wrinkles on my lip because I found out because of fascia, I have a strong lip tie anyway. So looking into more natural alternatives and, and not even that I hate booking appointments. Um, <laughs> This totally ties into chronic illness for me because I'm so medicalized that like booking an appointment and showing up is, it, I just, I hate it. And in it, that's probably ADHD too. Like showing up at appointments is difficult. <laughs> Ew, responsibility. I know, right? So one thing that I have um, been trying out and I, it was a little bit more because of, you know, it's a brand and it was patented and stuff, but it's a face blaster. And basically, it sounds so simple, but it's a tool, like a hand tool, classic hand tool that you use to 
work out your fascia. So like underneath your skin, we have fascia and that's yeah, like the layer between the skin and the fat, right? Like it's like yeah, a and, and fascia like runs throughout our whole body, but absolutely like you're it can stick things together and by using th- these tools, like specific tools for fascia, you can start to work it out and so it's really amazing for wrinkles. Um, mm-hmm. also, you know, it's really popular I think because it's great for cellulite, so in the beauty there's a lot of reasons to work out fascia physically for your body circulation wise, like um, just so many, so many reasons, like it limiting your mobility, a lot of different things, but in the beauty industry, uh, it's, it's amazing to work out for like cellulite because it's adhesions to your fascia of fat and you're able to kind of work that out. And, and the illu- illusion of what cellulite is can actually be um, smoothed. I haven't used it for that, but maybe that's something in my future. (laughs) Um, But for wrinkles and lines, you can use it on your face and it actually like blasts areas of fat. So for recontouring your face and different things. So it's similar to what are those, all those stones everyone's using called? Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I I use a jade roller. Well, and I think the stones that do a bit more pulling are probably working out your fascia as well because it's getting yeah. it's almost that pulling and yeah so do you have one that you like yes so ashley black and i've like years ago i watched i don't know if it was a documentary on her or maybe it was like a sales promo you know, infomercial i can't remember and i had seen this tool and i was like it's just a plastic stick but everyone raved about it. And now that I'm in like holistic healing groups and stuff, people are years later now still raving about it. So I decided, screw it. This is going to be my indulgence. And it's, yeah, an Ashley Black Face Blaster. So there's a whole bunch of different tools that they offer, but it's all based on that fascia, which I just find so interesting. So stay tuned because we will see if it does as much justice to my face as that Botox did that one time. But it's nice for me because it's easy. Like I can just do it whenever. So if I forget, I can come back to it. And you only need to do it a couple times a week. So Um, you should put it in your nightstand. That's like my favorite time to jade roll my face. Mm -hmm. Like I just like grab it. And while I'm laying in bed watching Netflix, just like roll my face out. And it's nice. And actually my children love the jade roller. They just. Yeah. I mean, like my daughter, funny enough, is 11. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She's turning 12. And she's really into, and I think the influence online, but like face routines, which I don't mind because she's moisturizing and I'm a big thing of like, okay, let's get you some that have some SPF. You can put it on in the morning. You feel like you're doing a face routine, but really she's just wearing sunscreen, which is great. But she is so diligent on doing these practices daily. It's made me more into like using the oils and like retinol and like different things that I have, like hydrochloric acid that... I've purchased for my face, but of course I still end up just using soap and water and going to bed. <laughs> so mm-hmm. at least I wash up my makeup now. That was something through my young years. I just never even, I would just have my like recycled mascara from the night before. <laughs> hey, so, <laughs> last night's eyeliner is today's smoky eye. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just a little bit of finger rub, but so she's really gotten me into a bit more of routine. So I, I am doing it with at night when I'm putting on my like face oils, which has been lovely, but yes, totally off tangent again. I can talk forever. Okay. Um, So I know that this is your Mary fuck kill, but also about my face. (laughs) I got one of those blue light. Uh, It's like a mask. Okay. Oh, full full disclosure. I bought it for my mom for Christmas. And then I was like, yeah, fuck that. I'm keeping it. And I've been using it and I love it. I actually love it. So what does so, it do? Okay. So I used to get these like really deep like heaters for my period, like mm-hmm. like under really deep. And I really liked like the zip pads that I put on them and they draw out the pus and whatever. But the there's a red light and a blue light and a yellow light. I've never used the yellow light. I've only used the red and the blue. But the blue kills bacteria. Ooh. So... I've been wear- like putting this mask on a few times a week and uh, I don't know if you can see it. Also, my skin's a little bit on the fritz because I'm going off steroids and like rebalancing hormones and things like that. 
but um, that's a process on its own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But instead of getting like these like super deep, like painful zits, I've noticed that I have like more scattered, like mild acne on my mm-hmm. chin, which is annoying, but it's because it's not like festering down below. Mm-hmm. So I think that in theory, as I continue to use it, it's just going to keep killing things. And then I'll have like this beautiful un complexion <laughs> yeah yeah so i've been obsessed with this mask that i didn't give to my mom for christmas oh well that i mean only now adding to that man one of my biggest struggles has been with hormones and i like of course no one knows there's nowhere i can research this and i feel like so many people living with chronic illness probably will get me on this i get melasma so like I get mm-hmm. like dark spots on my forehead. Like my skin has discoloration. One of the biggest drugs. Pregnancy is- does that. Well, so yeah, is hormones. But like I'm 38 and I'm not, well, that woman might think I'm pregnant, but I'm not pregnant. But because I have liver disease, I wonder, because your liver like has such a big role in production of hormones and like how it metabolizes stuff. And I wonder if that's a huge tie to this. I, I have no idea. And there's nowhere I can go actually find out. There's no studies that it's like face melasma compared to like polycystic liver disease. Like no one cares except for me because I'm dealing with it. Um, Right. But I'm curious about those masks because that's something that I suffer with, which summertime comes really bad. And that's one of those things that I've just kind of said, like, I just have to stop giving a fuck because it's there. I can do as much as I can with my gut health and try to regulate my hormones. But like at some point... I'll just put a bit of tanner on my face. I don't know. Yeah. Like it's sunscreen, hats, and yeah. uh, self tanner. <laughs> self tanner. Yeah. But I wonder if some, when a mask like that could help in like reduce, um, like it does yeah. even out. It does. Yeah. I can't remember if it's the red light or the blue light, but one of them. I know the red light's really good for like wrinkles and stuff, but yeah. Um, I'll look and see which one it was. But I got it really cheap at Indigo. So okay. I'll have to take yeah. a look. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, I hijacked your shit. What is your kill? What are you killing? Oh, um, <sighs> judgmental older ladies at the gym that think they have a right to comment on your body. <laughs> Boom. Bye, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I just like, let's just take a deep breath here and say we are energetic beings and to judge other people's physical, especially like, you know, I'm, I, ah, it just, it just drives me nuts. So that's yeah. my kill. Not that I would kill okay. Sheila, but, <laughs> but she can definitely, so I can screw her, kick in the butt with her. So, yeah. All right. Well, this was awesome. Thanks for catching up with me. Hey girl, we see you. And we want you to join our community where we can connect and continue the conversation. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at My Invisible Disease Podcast because no one should go through this alone. Thank you for listening. And for links, resources, or show notes, you can check us out at myinvisibledisease.com. 